All right. Rust in the Linux kernel. I know. I know. Everyone's curious about this one. Yeah. It's been uh, making waves for a while now. About a year ago, mm -hmm. Rust officially became part of the kernel, like officially official, with version 6.1. Right. And, you know, ever since then, there's been this... It's been buzzing. Constant you... buzz, yeah. Is it really living up to the hype? Well... Good question. That's what we're here to figure out. Yeah. So, we're diving deep into this fascinating Hacker News thread. Yeah. Think of it like we're eavesdropping on the experts. <laughs> I like that. Because we've got, like, actual kernel developers chime in. Yeah, at. this is cool. It's not every day we get this kind of, like insider perspective mm. it's a rare glimpse into the world of like open source development in action you know we get to see not just the technical details but the human side of it too the expectations the challenges and what it actually takes to bring something new into a project as massive as the linux kernel which yeah. by the way underpins a he he i would say massive chunk of the systems running our digital world i mean it's everywhere everywhere okay so picture this okay you're scrolling through hacker news right mm -hmm. and you see this question almost a year after Rust's grand entrance, where is it? Like, are there any real-world examples of it actually being used in the Linux kernel? Yeah. And everyone's kind of saying, well... Not really. It's like, yeah, the path is there, all paved and ready to go, but the traffic on that road is surprisingly light. That's a good way to put it. And, you know, one commenter actually pointed out there's a major reason for this. A lot of those kernel maintainers, they aren't exactly fluent in Rust. Right. And let's be real... They are incredibly busy people. Oh, yeah. They don't exactly have the bandwidth to become Rust experts on top of their already crazy workloads. Absolutely. I mean, we have to remember the sheer weight of responsibility when we're talking about the Linux kernel. This isn't like some side project. This is not some experimental side project. This is the bedrock of countless systems. Right. Stability and security are paramount. So introducing a new language, no matter <laughs> how exciting it is, and Rust is exciting, don't get me wrong, always comes with a certain level of, ooh, are we sure about this? Yeah. It's like trying to swap out the engine of a car while it's still running, you know? Exactly. Not impossible. Not impossible. But you better be absolutely sure that new engine is going to, like, purr like a kitten. You want that thing to be perfect. Precisely. And, you know, even if you have all the confidence in the world in that new engine, there's still a massive amount of inertia to overcome. That's true. Think about all the people involved in building, maintaining, and distributing Linux, all those moving parts. Oh, Each me. one needs to adapt, and that takes time, resources, and a whole lot of coordination. And you know what else came up in the thread? Firefox. Oh, interesting. How so? Well, someone brought it up as like a comparison point. Okay. They started integrating Rust several years ago, right? Mm-hmm. And this commenter was wondering, like, does that experience offer any lessons for us? Did Firefox integrating Rust actually live up to all the hype? That's a clever analogy because it really does sort of illuminate both the potential pitfalls and the long-term benefits that come with integrating a language like Rust. Right. This particular commenter mentioned that Firefox's build process became more complex. Which, fair. And for them personally, they hadn't really noticed any groundbreaking improvements in their, you know, day-to-day -day use. Yeah. Like, I remember when Firefox first started using Rust, it felt like the fact that it was written in Rust was more of a talking point than any actual changes you could see or feel. Oh, interesting. But then people pushed back, right? They were like, hold on, there's more to it than that. Absolutely. Some people were quick to point out that, okay, maybe on the surface it wasn't this huge revolution, but beneath the surface, yeah. major improvements, yeah. especially within the CSS engine, which, you know, powers how web pages are displayed. Right, right. These were improvements that they argued wouldn't have been possible without Rust. So it seems like what we're learning here is kernel development, it's all about trust. Trust, definitely. And stability. And stability, yeah. And yeah, Rust has a ton of potential benefits. For sure. But it needs to really prove itself in the real world before we're going to see widespread adoption. I think that's fair to say. But then the question becomes, how do we get to those real world results? Like, what's the next step? That's the million dollar question. Well, there's this project, the Asahi Linux project. Oh, yeah. Are you familiar with that one? Yeah, they're the ones working on those drivers for Apple's M1 chips, right? Exactly. And get this, they're using Rust, like a lot of it, for their GPU driver. I was actually just about to bring that up. People are really excited about this project, and it makes sense. Oh, yeah, for good reason. This might be the most, like, concrete example we have right now of Rust code that's actually intended for the Linux kernel. Wow. Seriously. 
Now, just to be clear, it hasn't been merged upstream yet. Right. So it's not like officially official part of Linux yet. Exactly. It's not officially part of the main Linux kernel code base yet. But still, just the fact that it exists. It works. And it works. That's huge. Huge. Huge step. Speaking of upstream and all that, someone in the thread mentioned a comment from Greg Crow Hartman. Oh, yeah. He's like a Linux celebrity, <laughs> for those who don't know. Right, exactly. Yeah. He's one of the top maintainers of the kernel. Yeah, he knows his stuff. Big deal. And he actually confirmed that, yeah, right now the only REST code that's been merged is like the foundational framework code. So it's more like they've laid the groundwork. It's like the foundation of the house. Exactly. The foundation. But they haven't really built anything on top of it yet. Yeah, we haven't seen any, like actual functionality implemented in Rust yet. But you know what I think is really interesting? The overall feeling from other kernel developers... Well, it's the vibe. It's not like this outright rejection of Rust. Yeah. It's not like, get that out of here. If anything... A long, like, cautious curiosity. Cautious optimism. That's the perfect way to put it. Like, they're watching closely, seeing how these Rust components perform, how easy they are to work with, especially compared to that, you know, traditional C code. Right, because C can be a, a bit of a beast sometimes. Yeah. Exactly. So they want to see, does Rust actually do what it says it's going to do? Prove it. Does it really deliver on those promises of, like, memory safety and reliability in a real-world setting? Because, let's be real, that's what matters. It's that classic show-me mentality, right? Yeah. Actions speak louder than words, especially when you're talking about something as mission critical as the Linux kernel. You're not messing around with that unless you are absolutely sure. Oh, absolutely. And this is where, you know, that whole human aspect of software development really comes into play. Kernel development, it thrives on this idea of consensus, trust, and like a healthy dose of pragmatism. Right. So it's going to take more than just you know, theoretical benefits to convince these really experienced developers to fully embrace a new language. They need those real world results and getting those results. Well, that takes time, patience, and frankly, a few brave souls who are willing to be like fat pioneers. It seems like the Asahi Linux project might just be one of those pioneers. Maybe. But I mean, where do we go from here? Someone in the thread asked this question and it kind of blew my mind. Mm hmm. Could we ever see, like, entire file systems written in Rust? Oh, wow. That just seems so ambitious. It's definitely a bold thought. But, okay, think about it this way. Trying to rewrite the core of the existing Linux kernel in Rust. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. That's a Herculean task. Like, talk about potential for instability, right? But starting fresh, building a new file system completely from scratch, designed with Rust's principles of safety and reliability baked right in. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. That's a completely different story. Right, like it's a brand new house built with all the best materials from the start. Exactly, you're not trying to fix the plumbing in a hundred-year-old house, you know? And there was another interesting point. Um, yeah. What about those, like, really big companies, right? The ones that need super, super reliable file systems. Oh, I see where you're going with this. Think, like, Facebook, for example. They've got the resources and the motivation to invest in something like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A new generation of file systems that are like blazing fast, but also incredibly secure. That's the dream come true for them. So maybe, just maybe, those big players are the ones who will really push for rust in the kernel. It's entirely possible. It's not always just about you know, the technology itself, right? Right. Sometimes it takes someone with enough influence to say, we believe in this, let's make it happen. That's a really good point. Yeah. So, I mean, where does that leave us? Will the future of the Linux kernel be written in Rust? What do you think? Ah, uh, the billion dollar question. If I had a crystal ball, I'd tell you. Right. Unfortunately, it's one of those things where we can look at all the signs, all the trends. Connect the dots. Exactly. Yeah. But ultimately, only time will tell how it all unfolds. Makes sense. So to everyone listening, if you're as fascinated by this stuff as we are, as I am, the Asahi Linux Project, seriously, go check it out. It's such a cool example. It really shows what's possible with Rust, even if it's still early days. I mean, this whole conversation just reminds me, technology is not just about the code. Yep. It's about the people writing it, the communities building it. The dreamers. Exactly. Pushing the boundaries, taking risks. That's how we got Linux in the first place. So whether the future is Rust or C or some language we haven't even thought of yet, oh no, it's going to be exciting. That wraps up our deep dive into Rust and the Linux kernel. Show notes are on the website. All the links are there. Until next time, keep exploring.